Hello and welcome back. My name is Chris and this is The Future of Photography and with me the, the whole gang again, which is amazing. So, <laughs> Imar, Adrian, Jeremiah, how are you feeling today? Good. Mixed. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Mixed, yeah, just I'm good. I could beat good. that. I'm pretty good. Yeah, just for definitely. reference, we're recording this on the 3rd of October 2020. If you want to look up what happened in history at that day. Yeah. So <laughs> let. Or That's don't, yeah. probably. There's, there's some. Um, anyway, to be let's, cheerful. let's um, do what we do here and talk about photography. And uh, today we have, well, we have chosen the, the way we decide what we do here on this show and the topics. Um, first of all, there's the Discord. So people are welcome to just give us info, to give us ideas, to. Um, to to paste uh, to paste things in there from their browsers and uh, the community on our discord is growing by the day which is awesome um and then the four of us we have this little back channel where we go back and forth about things and sometimes one thing pops in and within like a minute or two everyone goes oh that's a good one let's talk about this one and this is what happened today jeremiah suggested to talk about the snapshot so jeremiah take it away well all, all of this came um came through as i you know do my daily walks here during the pandemic and 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 take pictures and and i started to uh just feel the difference between when i go out with a particular point of view um in mind with whatever camera i happen to be carrying uh, focused on an aesthetic or a subject uh, or the light or something that, that uh, creates a consciousness for me in which to use the photography to be ever present. And, um, and then I started to think about the, um, the joy of not having that when I walked. In other words, just random shooting. And I then began to question the art of the snapshot, the snapshot itself, and what's the difference between art and snapshot as, as a kind of overview? What's the real difference? And, and I think, and we can, let's talk about this because I don't think there's a real answer, but I think it has to do with intention uh, or storytelling um, or trying to approach whatever subject as an observable aesthetic. Um, and, and in that way, you know, when I, I personally, when I, when I shoot, um, I try to keep my ratio of shots that I capture and shots that end up being close to the intention, say a little bit better, a little bit worse, but close to it in something that I can manipulate or work through to arrive at, at an image that I truly love. And um, I try to keep that ratio low. So I, I approach each image with a very kind of um, formal sense of composition and light and positioning and moment of capture, etc. cetera. Um, and, and so out of that comes the kind of converse, which is the random capture of just going and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and then discovering it later. Um, and the dis even the discovery process um, will gear myself to something that has an intention towards art, aesthetic, etc., or just preserving uh, a moment. So my question is, is there a formal aesthetic to a snapshot? like grunge aesthetic, you know, just raw, um, not necessarily perfectly focused, just a moment in time. Um, and, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of compare some of the, my, my favorite artistic snap, snapshot aesthetic uh, formal artists with the history of snapshots uh, as a, kind of global pastime of people who now carry uh, a phone around with them and what that means, um, old picture books, um, and, and a way of kind of connecting with one's family and memories and all of that. One certainly uh, aware here in California when there's a fire and there's a warning, get out, 
One of the very first things after people take their passports or papers or social security numbers, they grab their photographs. Uh, if they're not backed up, if they're old fashioned, they, they will grab those because those are, quote, irreplaceable. I think those of us who are now um, aware that we can back up our, our images, that, that they do exist in a, a cloud, gives us a little bit of calm pause. How many backups do you have, but Jeremiah? I have multiples. I have, <laughs> I, have, I have a backup because in my view, like riding a motorcycle, you're either down or you're going down. So <laughs> they, they, they are valuable. They are really valuable. So multiple copies. Same thing for me. I can. Yeah. I cannot. I have. I had one. One very very painful loss of photography where I lost half a year of photography. Yeah, it's it's and a terrible thing. This will never. Knocking on wood, never ever happened to me again. Yeah, yeah I, I I have two sets of images, two complete sets of images, probably close to two gigabytes that are in the cloud. I have a, a, a very uh, large 16 terabyte uh, RAID, a Drobo actually, um, and I and I have an outboard, um, an outboard, um, you know, hard drive that I keep most of my uh, work and the hard drive every quarter i actually back that up and put it in a safety deposit box. and how so many have, of those photos are but by, by your definition snapshots um it's it's almost impossible to tell for me mm -hmm. you know the, the, you, the, i mean i mean you just you just said the pictures with intention and without intention but i can't, um, I, I don't know because I, I think i take more snapshots now that i have uh have been using an iphone for the last um, you know, decade or so. So I, I tend to do snapshots on that. I tend not to do snapshots if I'm carrying my my Leica with me, though I am now kind of gearing up, which is what this this is about personally, of just taking my camera with me and just shooting without any consciousness, like just snap, 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 whatever gets to me and, and just loosening up. And I think that the if I want to provoke anything in this discussion as we move forward, it's um, to change the way you approach photography in your daily life. If you're just a random capture kind of person, try to go out and be very formal about it. And conversely, <laughs> if you're very formal about your captures, Go out and just be completely um, amateur in terms of uh, open to whatever, to focus, to you know, to to even exposure. Just go and shoot and see what happens. So it's I'd the, go ahead. I'd I, I'd like to extend this now to Adrian and Imar because um, the one thing that you brought up is that you kind of tie this to the different kind of camera you use. The one is your iPhone, which is more for snapshots, and the other is the big camera, which is more for proper photos. And Adrian mm. is is in that boat as well, at least with different kinds of cameras, the big camera and the iPhone, whereas Imar is an iPhone exclusive shooter. So there must be some different. Uh, Adrian, what do you see that like? Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going through my head, actually, because <laughs> I think um, I'm at the moment in the middle of uh, an exercise. I don't think I'd call it a challenge. I'm in the middle of a, an exercise of shooting uh, with the Hipstamatic app every day and sharing that uh, and letting it randomize, basically, basically randomize the effect. Um, and that for me is both a snapshot and deliberate because although what you might think of, of that particular app and shooting of a phone as a snapshot exercise, actually it's it's trying to, for me, reduce the friction in, in shooting and shooting anything, but it's shooting things that I see. It's So although I'm shooting anything and shooting very free and easy, it is a, it is looking for something um, and, and that is that is deliberate it could be a, a light and shadow or it could be a detail somewhere or something just and, and i'm doing this as a very deliberate exercise at the moment so part that snapshot part not and then i think uh you know the the traditional sort of you know family out and about you know cataloging the family's adventures over years thing is that you know sometimes at times i've taken that very seriously you know so okay we're gonna have a, a get you know get get gonna get some lights out or, or whatever or, or use a, a favorite lens or, and really work hard at those things but at the end of the day some of those really are just snapshots of life um and so mm. i think what i'd say is uh, 
I do, think do you have this? Do you have this split between the two different cameras and the two different types of photography? Do you have that? Uh, yes, I th I think so. But again, it it's not that it's always the same way around. So sometimes I'd be using the phone to be for a deliberate exercise like I am yeah. at the moment. And other times it would be a, a more traditional dedicated camera um, that, that I would be looking to use. I see. Um, so it, 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 it switches around for me. But I do think the snapshot is a powerful thing. And some of the some of my favorite photos over the years are snapshots because they bring back memories. Uh, so, Imar, you are um, almost exclusive iPhone shooter, you have a different camera, but you don't really use it. So does that split apply to you as well? Um, I suppose it does. I think a snapshot by its very definition is something that's uncontrived. So I think it, the minute you get into planning it out, it's, it's, it's not really a snapshot anymore. I love Do that. You think? I love what so, you just said. It's not contrived. Because uh, yeah. the, the bigger question is, is all of art contrived? Well, hmm. yes, I think it, it is. is. Contri well, I think most of it is because it comes from, I'm, I'm not saying contrived in a bad way. It's yeah. cr contrived a la created, yeah. made with mm -hmm. intention, going back. Planned, yeah. Yeah, yeah in some way. Set up. Uh, on yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Because even on the hunt, you know, Adrian's hunting for a shadow, uh, mm. uh, maybe a texture, the way light falls on a on a person he's looking for that whether it's conscious or mm. unconscious and when he sees it after going through multiple uh <laughs> multiple ways of getting into his hipstamatic he will take the picture <laughs> does that does that make me a really subtle and sophisticated artist then I if i'm using does. a snapshot technique to no, do something no, intentional which, br which I... brings me to uh <laughs> to a the the kind of uh, one of the focuses of this particular episode, which is, I I, I want to talk very briefly about four uh, photographers who represent a snapshot aesthetic, but have taken it to a level of a in the art world extremely valuable, b in the kind of just appreciation of a consistent aesthetic over years and years, uh, Vivian Meyer who is the, you know, the best known, um, she did her photos with no intention of having them um, uh, seen by gallerists or presented or published. She mm. just did them. It was only way after her death mm. that um, she came to be discovered. And, and her color work, which I highly recommend people take a look at, is um, even closer to that uh, aesthetic of snapshot. Um, so Vivian Meyer is, is, is someone who, who just uh, felt present in the world and captured it. Uh, I'm not sure if it was for memory, but just the experience of being uh, in a place at a time um, and, and in, in many ways just being a fly on the wall. I'm and they have a snapshot aesthetic, but they are mm. really shot with intent. You can tell when you look at them. So yes. it's mm. art that looks like mm. a snapshot, but it's not yes. really. That's right. And, and it's that fine line that, that creates the, uh, I guess, the blurriness between what constitutes a snapshot. I mean, with artists who use that motif, that aesthetic, um, I, I think the, the consistency of their work when you look at hundreds, if not thousands of their pictures, there's a, I don't want to say sameness, but, but a, a cohesive aesthetic that binds them together. That a style. Makes, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, a style, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephen Shore, another spectacular uh, photographer who uh, I would say influenced uh, my work and has from the very get-go. Um, I've been... Um, just obsessed with his work for years and years and years and, and love his, um, just the way he approaches life, color, blandness, uh, ordinariness that gives it a heightened reality. I find his work to be extraordinary and um, well worth looking at. And he's someone who travels across the country or has and just takes snaps. Uh, but they do have a mood, tone, style that is unique to him. 
Uh, and next on my list is... Uh, See, that, that's the other interesting thing, isn't it? I think that that moment in time, that snapshot of a moment in time, that's never going to come back again. Yeah. That's the other gorgeous thing about a snapshot. About photography, too. Um, Martin Parr, yeah. another one, uh, made... He, he does... Maybe he, he does what Stephen uh, Shore does uh, in, in many, many ways, but maybe with a sense of irony and humor is how I would differentiate. Um, uh, I, I find his, his work to be extraordinarily ironic, and you can see this as we're sharing these. Um, I think that's... It, it, so, so Martin Parr is an interesting one because uh, for, for me, because some of the places he shoots, I actually recognize because, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, that that adds an extra dimension, whereas whereas the St Stephen Shaw less so because I, I clearly clearly our, our travelling paths have not crossed yeah. very. Uh, I very recognise the Stephen Shaw. Yeah, so that that adds yeah. for me a, a, an interesting dimension, and I think that feel, makes it feel possibly a bit more snapshotty. Um, but then you you can sometimes see when you see something like that, and you're taking a, a, a or taking or making a, a photograph in a in a location where you you may have seen uh, inspiring photographs of the same location. It's very it, it's sometimes very difficult to a get away from that, and and b to to, to get anywhere close to it as well <laughs> it's just like it's like I you come away thinking so, right i don't want to take the shot that martin Parr <laughs> took and then and then it. you get it and you look at it and you think how come mine doesn't look anything like his i, sh I shot one very <laughs> similar of a couple taking a, a selfie on, from a selfie stick on the um on the red Stone. stairs at yeah. times square um yeah so. yeah yeah. All, all of that and the one you're showing on the screen at the moment which is for, for the funny. listeners benefit is is two couples have, have uh, sorry a couple uh, taking a selfie at stonehenge um, uh, <laughs> with, with and having a kiss at the same time it's a great shot mm -hmm. i was at stonehenge a few weeks ago and i didn't get anything like like that it's so it, it's a once it is it is both a source of inspiration and a source of frustration i find the thing about martin parr is mm. he is looking for moments like this and he yeah. must have an ability to anticipate that moment and i i say this because of the consistency of his work in other words he's always there mm. at that moment of let's call it irony or or celebration or just that, yeah. that that moment that gives it a unique sense and i think that's part of what you think you're driving at with this about the snapshot aesthetic because i know that a lot of martin parr's work some of his most famous work is either been a a commission or a personal project of some sort um, and so actually it's not unplanned it may be documentary or snapshot mm. in style but it's not unplanned well yeah so it's, and it's 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 a, it's a really interesting thing um uh, and and yeah, like I say, it frustrates the hell out of me sometimes. <laughs> well, he must be the, a very good um, observer of human behavior that he can yeah. sort of anticipate the moments so. like that. Like that. I mean, I went through a period times, like like that also in the in the seventies. Um, you know, carrying around my my uh, Nikon, you know, uh, F, and and just like with a wide angle lens and just snapping wildly. Shriners parades, or you know, all of these kind of perverse uh, <laughs> cultural humans, uh, and you know, I've I've yet to go back into those uh, folios and, and digitize and, and and print them out and see if there's anything there. But uh, I did have a show of that years and years ago. Uh, the last um, uh, the last one that I wanted to discuss here in, in this particular um, topic is uh, a photographer a lot less well-known uh, called Slim Aarons. Um, uh, his work is uh, very un unfamiliar to most uh, because he, uh, it, I think he traveled in circles, you know, Capri and Samaritz. And he, he seemed, I don't know... Um, how, but he, he was really one of those uh, people who uh, hobnobbed with um, the kind of, whether they were rich and famous, famous or just rich, but lived the life, the style. Um, and his work was as much about, um, I think, very, very typical, um, just preserving a memory. In other words, just snapped with apparent 
uh, lack of formal aesthetic, but they all felt unified. His work is really astonishing when you do a deep dive in it. Uh, his work is really um, This one was new to me, um, uh, and I had a quick flick through some of them. Um, and yeah, um, really uh, thought-provoking stuff, because as you say, it looks... It, it looks nonchalant yeah um but it's but but in other ways it, it doesn't i mean there is some there's some shots of you know people around a pool i think in a house in palm springs so it's obviously like a yeah. yes yeah, sort of um mid-century look about the architecture and and stuff like that and, and and that's all great and it reminds me of and i can never remember who took it it's a very famous photo of faye dunaway uh, taken a night after a big party where she'd won an Oscar or something like that and I can never remember who took it but that was a fully staged one but this has that sort of aesthetic Do you and know Lauren Greenfield? Uh, are, are you aware of her work? I'm not Anybody? sure that I do actually, no um, I, I should really put her stuff in there she's a, I, I believe she's a magnum photographer she, she yeah. captures kind of, you know uh, the wealthy uh, young uh, young adults you know, in play, she's LA based, uh, tremendous photographer and, and filmmaker, um, who, whose, whose work is very, very similar. I mean, I can list, you know, hundreds of people working in this, on this aesthetic. These are just a few, but, um, so those are some that span many, many decades. Of course, when we go to the past and start talking about, well, where did this come from? I think the earliest uh, photographers were just part of it was a novelty so there wasn't um initially a sense of 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 a kind of owned aesthetic that they could present uh, on the street or with their family uh, so it starts out very formal because of the equipment as the equipment gets lighter the work gets a little more uh familial or looser or less formal in its uh, framing and 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 lighting and so that that will it will circle back to that. But as we move into the future of what a snapshot could be, I, I, I want to ask you guys if you think the snapshot of the future will be most oriented or influenced uh, by new kinds of gear, whether it's our glasses that we blink and take an image, or or something else, uh, whether it's you know being able to. <laughs> access cctv cameras and snap something or or satellites or new kinds of cameras so, so one thing i've noticed is uh, you know through the uh what, what chris often refers to as the democratization of photography uh you know in the last 10 15 years or so yeah. is uh i i think there there is an aesthetic which i'll call the parent aesthetic, let's say, just for just for, mm. for a better point, which is that, um, you know, there's a, like taking photos, a lot of photos of the tops of your children's head. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, that, that is, uh, you know, and I, I fear that equipment uh, that you know, wearable cameras um, will uh will take us further down that path if 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 everybody's wearing cam uh, glasses that can take a, a snapshot uh, and the camera is built into the glasses well every photo is going to be taken between about five foot and six foot isn't it and and that's no good that that yeah you know, yeah you know, so i think there's a danger there's a risk to the future aesthetic and and maybe it's not it maybe it's not mm -hmm. a risk to the future aesthetic maybe it's an issue with the current aesthetic <laughs> but it's yeah i i yeah the anybody any parent that ever asks me well what can i do to take better photos of my children you know you're, you're an enthusiast yeah you know, what well, yeah i just say crouch down <laughs> you know get down on their get level, on their level. Yeah. get on the floor yeah, yeah. Yeah, hit the floor. Yeah, hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, you know, for for All me, for me, um, the the snapshot is um, is very much linked to simplicity of the tools I use and. Um, the, currently, what we do, and I think that's also the reason why we predominantly use our smartphones for snapshots and not the big cameras is because the smartphones are connected and they store their images and they're easy to retrieve and there's mm -hmm. no hassle whatsoever whereas with your big camera you still have to like 
plug it in, take the card out, put it in a card reader, mm. import it, do some work with it. And for me, mm. that prevents me from t doing too many snapshots because I know that I will have follow up work to do. After. It's work that I have to do in some way or another, whereas uh, I suppose that you could look at it in terms of like that your phone, um, like just the ubiquity of digital devices to take pictures on now is just it's, it's gone to such an extreme that I suppose the way you could look at it if you want, you know, is to see your your snapshots that you take on your phone as almost sketches to the painting, which is the, the picture that you take with your big camera. So, yeah, it's an interesting, yeah, you know, yeah. if you're scouting a location or, you know, just trying to get an angle right, just take a million shots. And then when you decided on the one you want, go back with your big camera and well, get the shot. Yeah, I mean, I do that if I'm working on a TV series or, or a film. Uh, that's what we do. And in fact, I have several apps that I just program in. Uh, say a red camera with you know a 35 millimeter lens and uh, I can even program in uh, what kind of gamma I have I can get it very very close to the look or the uh, LUT the uh, lookup table mm. that I'm going to use and snap 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 and then when, when I get back mm. with my uh, DP my cinematographer uh, will review and he'll know uh, very specifically if he wasn't on the scout uh, that I'm looking at, say, this part of this location uh, with this intention on this. And it, it, it becomes a lot, uh, a tool of communication. Uh, out of that often comes a really beautiful image in and of itself that I will kind of extrapolate out and use. Um, but I, I, I actually think that part of what you're saying is just having it with you. And as more and more people, I think we talked about this last show, when you have a camera with you, uh, when you have a camera oh. with you, <laughs> <Everything's good. laughs> and and more people are used to iPhones as a quote non-threatening, you know, you don't have to say, okay, everybody, smile, mm. you know that that old trope. Mm. Uh, that everyone's taking selfies or pictures with their phone. You see it all the time, so it becomes something that allows. Uh, moments to be captured. I bet, and I have not done this yet, but um, my next exploration of my own kind of personal uh, photography, not necessarily art, but just I want to see what happens, is going out with my iPhone on the wide angle lens uh, with it fully ready to shoot with a um, multiple frame so I can, you know, take, you know, bursts of, you know, spray and nine, pray, <laughs> spray and pray uh, on the street and, and literally see what happens with my phone. If you're mm. doing this with a, you know, Fuji, Nikon, Canon, like, uh, you know, etc. People like you, you start to raise that camera to your head, people are going to either move away, turn away, change. If you're shooting mm. from the hip, which often street photographers will do, and you set the the focus and exposure ahead of time, et cetera, you're still limiting yourself. But if you're walking around with a with a a, a smartphone, you know, an iPhone or an Android, uh, and just like spraying and praying, nobody's really paying attention to you because mm. everyone's uh, is he talking to to someone on the phone, right? Uh, is just he imagine, a just selfie? imagine, just imagine. Yeah. Three years in the future, we have these uh, goggles on that give us a uh, viewfinder in our on our eyes while the actual camera the phone is somewhere completely different that's right yes, yeah exactly belt so, Je jeremiah i have a suggestion for you for that one it's something i've been meaning to do myself for ages but i haven't got around to do yet it is to do that with the cell phone uh but hold in your other hand uh, a bluetooth shutter button because one of the things that i find that is a a source of friction Ah. is is the ergonomics and so i have a, a little bluetooth shutter button you can get them anywhere i think mine is a joby one it happened to come with a like a phone hand grip uh but uh you can, you can buy bluetooth shutter buttons anywhere um and hold that in your other hand and then you can just sort of waft your camera around you don't even need to be looking at the screen you don't need to reconfigure your hand to hit the buttons or anything like that that is the idea of the day for me for this exploration mm. that is a great idea 
But by oh. the way, for those right. who watched the video, we just lost Emar, which kind of uh, <laughs> ki killed our setup here. But that doesn't matter. We she are wants to go to... buy that button right away. So you can't you can't <laughs> see Adrian right now, good, but he's somewhere in there. To, to sit on, yeah. <laughs> Adrian is somewhere hidden in there. Um, if you if you scuttle all the way to the left, Adrian, we will see you again. No, no, to your uh, left, you, to your there left. There he is. There he is. Uh, there he is. Uh, or on the other side. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. How did you do that? Do I, can I get into Chris's bubble? No, you can't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of... I had, actually, I that had would somebody be fun else. if I could. I was, on a, I was on a work call the other day, a, t a Teams call, and uh, we had this, th here's, here's, so snapshots, here's a, good, here's a good snapshots topic, right? So we're all stuck at home doing a bunch of video calls. And one of the things that Zoom made popular and everybody else is copying is the idea of having a custom background. Uh, and uh, I had uh, I had a guy, one of my colleagues the other day had, had uh, done a screen grab of me uh, and then put as his custom background a picture of me <laughs> in, in, in my study uh, so that he was like, this is this is a shot from remember the time I came round to your house. And of course, he's never been to my house. <laughs> so there you go. There's snapshots. There's a new um, a new publishing channel there for, for your snapshots, which is the is, is the virtual background for all your video calls that you do. Well, no. and, and of course, uh, we have a Discord and there is a showcase uh, channel where you can showcase your snapshots to us and we'll showcase ours. Um, so so the, the, one of the questions I wanted to ask uh, is, you know, I think you've answered half of it. Uh, the future um, of snapshots, will it be gear oriented or will it be subject oriented? Well, don't people only take photographs of themselves these days? <laughs> like, I, I, I think taking pictures of your kids or your grandkids and wh whatever uh, family you may have is something that yeah, is uh, certainly at the kind of root of all of these. I mean, I Hello? have, you know. Yes, we can hear you. I have a seven-year-old granddaughter who is like my best friend. I must have 10,000 photographs of her. You know what I mean? I, I, t yeah. I, I, you know, I take a lot I, and I work them and I manipulate them and I, you know, kind of give them an aesthetic. And then, of course, I send them to my daughter or family and they're like, oh, my God, why don't you take that? And and she <laughs> uh, she calls me uh, every night at 630 um, nowadays on on uh, FaceTime to basically play games or read stories or just nice. hang out with me mm -hmm. for an hour and and we're engaged or sometimes she's just playing a game and just wants me there like Wonderful. talking and whatnot yeah. it's a it's an incredible thing that's come out of this pandemic uh, it's just amazing and I see her once a week but she lives on the other side of of town, which in LA is another it's about country. four hours away. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> uh, but out of that, I have so many interesting screenshots of her that I've kind of taken in and really redressed. And people are like, "How did you get that angle?" Where ah, you... see, there's another snapshot form then for the future, or or, or out of necessity. And I know that there's been quite there's been quite a few high profile. Uh, you know, uh, publications in 2020 of, of photographers who've learned to use iPads and, and things like that to, to take uh, remote photographs. Um, I'm not quite sure what I think about that, actually. I think I, I, I like the fact that it's a, it has to be an active collaboration between the subject and the photographer. I think that's a really powerful thing. Uh, uh, it may be. Um, uh I'm only interested in the final picture. I mean, me, I don't really need to go to the sausage factory. I mean, I like being in the sausage factory <laughs> because I, I, you know, like, you know, I, I like getting my hands dirty and, and learning a technique and really owning that technique and drilling down and then forgetting it if I, if I need to, but, or using a very small part of it. But I like, you know, it's taken me you know, my whole life to, to start to feel that I have some modicum of control over the uh, process and technique of photography. I mean, I continually learn. I continually study. I'm continually trying to understand the nuances of technique. And that's why I want to free myself into the aesthetic of <laughs> hose it down discover <laughs> as something completely different and, okay. and use it wonderful <laughs> so now we know where 
now we know the future of the snapshot or maybe have an idea where this might go something to think about and if 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 you out there listening to this or watching this if you have an idea or thoughts about this come join us on our discord and discuss with us um it's time for the picks of the week let us start with adrian let me see oh okay Okay, so this I one have... you put it in there, mbp.com. Ah, yeah, so great. So, oh, bravo. I... bravo. Oh, and by, by the way, you see this here in German because it detected my browser language. And let me try to fix that. Uh, yes, this so, so this is this is a company. Uh, so, so this 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 is a facilitation of snapshot making. King. that's that's the that's the tenuous link to this week's theme <laughs> um uh if, if members of our discord may have noted that i actually uh, i actually ordered a new camera uh this week um well new to me i am trading uh my fuji xt1 for a fuji xt3 which will allow me to do much better much more easily use it as a, a webcam for a lot of my professional work that i do where i am on video calls a lot um, and for recording this as well where we do video now so uh these guys are great uh, they are a company they they do have a, a german contingent and i think a you they're moving into the usa as well and some other no, they've, com- they, uh, other they've been here i've i've used them and had great experience have you well they're they're, they're from <laughs> brighton which is a, 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 a town <laughs> not too yeah, just over an hour away from where i live uh-huh. um and uh, they, they, I would say, having used them before, they offer really, really good service. They do. And so I have, I have bought. Uh, uh, it's not arrived yet, but I've just bought a Fuji XT3, uh, and uh, it says like new. Uh, and if it's anything like stuff I've had from them before, it will be like new. And uh, it's cost me just over five hundred pounds. Uh, because I've traded in my XT1 and they give very fair prices, so um, you know I'm looking forward to getting a new camera. And anyway, just to get, just uh, no, nothing, no sponsorship, no special relationship or commercial relationship. I'm just a happy customer of theirs. Yeah, so yeah. that's my As tip I for am. today. Very good, Emar. Yours is um, Mine is a is, gallery. It's a Flickr account that I I found at one stage, and I just have to go back there and look at it every now and again. Scroll down a good bit from the beginning. It's a lot of portraits at the start. But um, what drew me to this was, uh, it's very enigmatic. I don't know who the person is, but it's all photos they found in an attic. So I guess they're scanning in negatives and just sharing them. And they're so random. But, um, there's this. all kinds of everything. There's thousands and thousands of pictures. You could be looking at it all day. So so these just, are photos from multiple attics or just from one specific one? I, I have no clue. It's just the account <laughs> is called. There's no information that goes along with it at all. But um, I've been looking at it for a while and it's just it always <laughs> intrigues me. Like the stories of where do they get these? Those are true snapshots. These, yeah, they, they are really true are. snapshots. They mm. are. Yes. Good boy. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Some, some it's quite like artistic, if you go to. But, to a, uh, I guess you call them jumble sales. In, in, in yeah. It would do here. Yes, I know yeah, what a jumble yeah, sale is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, sometimes people yeah. are oh my selling God, like that, old look, look albums. Look at this, 1,400 <laughs> pages. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's man, that's a lot Millions of, of them, yeah, oh yeah. I guess God. it's a hobby they have that they just <laughs> find uh, negatives and scan them in and just share that, them to see what's on them, maybe. It's that just their really own curiosity. But that is excellent. very random stuff. stuff. Excellent yeah. choice, Seymour. I love it. Totally random, yeah. Good, Very good snapshotty stuff. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah, yours is next. Uh, Shin Noguchi, um, a, a, a very, very fine, again, a sense of irony and, and fun Japanese street photographer uh, that bridges that snapshot uh, art aesthetic that I like. Talk about the tops of children's heads. <laughs> There's one. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, these are... Uh, they're they're beautiful they're so well observed uh this person who i do not know but but his work makes me feel he is so completely present um <laughs> on the street mm. i i just l- love his what he's finding look at that i mean mm. very, yeah, good very stuff fun. yeah really yeah good that's stuff. Uh, that so is really amazing thing. thank you for sharing that yes. <laughs> look at that, that is like nuts. <laughs> I, I love irony in those kinds yes. of of image images just love okay that. that that's a link definitely to follow and look look in deeper um i have brought you the opposite of the 
Snapshot. Have you heard about this story? Uh, yes, so, I, yeah, I read yeah. this. So uh, cosmetics company. Uh, yeah. How do you pronounce them? Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder. Yeah. Estee Lauder. Um, they are paying NASA one hundred eighty twenty-eight thousand dollars for a photo shoot on the ISS. So they are sending up with a mm -hmm. with a, one of those supply missions. They are sending up some of their advanced night repair, whatever stuff, <laughs> and and then they are paying NASA because you know NASA opened up um, the the ISS for commercial stuff uh, a couple of years ago, I think. Crazy. So there's been tourists up there now, and um, that um, is fairly fairly reasonably priced, I would think. Um, not only will they send this up, of course, they won't send a photographer up, but they will send uh, they instructions. Will have, they will have instructions and they will have the, 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 the astronauts to take the shots. They have excellent photo gear up there. There are good photographers. Um, we've seen a lot of great shots from up there. Na NASA charges a professional fee per hour of the astronauts time of seventeen thousand and five hundred dollars whoa well that i think i think nice. i'll charge that as my new hourly uh, rate actually I think I'll <laughs> you know you look at that that the cost of that one hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars, right and then you think mm -hmm. well i used to make cosmetic commercials when yep. i was directing them and like often the budget was like i don't know a million dollars. Yeah, right? yeah. Or, yeah. This is cheap. Or, this is compared, very compared cheap. To cheap. I, you know, it's so cheap. You get your all your crew is paid for. And it includes getting the goods back from the ISS with the next mission that comes down. So they can auction that off or sell that for all like that, this cosmetics yes. that has been in space. Um, so, yeah, the future so of photography. This is, this is what in the, in the new jargon they call a collaboration, isn't it? Because yes. you did, to make that image, you really didn't need to send a bottle of perfume to a spaceship. <laughs> Not really. No. You could have made that image Bragging quite happily. Bragging rights, dude. Bragging well, rights. So, but that's what, it, that's what it is, isn't it? So this, this is what I mean about the... The, the collaboration so again future of the snapshot collaborations because the you know all of the youtubers are doing it none of the no, none of these youtubers or, or other in, social influencers they don't talk about sponsors anymore or they don't they don't talk about advertising they all talk about oh, i'm doing a collab i'm doing a collab with uh, with nike or, yeah. or estee Lauder. but or, it feeds back you know that nasa is very very active in the social media space and yeah. so apparently is estee Lauder. so why Absolutely. Yeah. And, and but so by the I way, does good. Tom Cruise have to go to space to shoot a movie in space? Well, he's gone. Probably right? not. <laughs> yeah. Well, Roger Moore went, didn't he, to do Moonraker? <laughs> yeah, that was true. <laughs> <Just story. laughs> by the way, I can hardly wait till IATSE, the, the, uh, you know, the union, and, and it goes like, well, where, where was the union rep up there? Like, like, oh, wow. Like, this is shot non-union. You can't put this on the air. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, you know, you know, didn't this even occur to me. with with the current climate. This is a lawsuit I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, um, that's going to be very different. Okay, with that, uh, let's say goodbye. This was the Future of Photography episode 150, which means if Ooh, you're new to this, there are 149 Ooh. other episodes out there over on the futurephotography.com. We have a Twitter and an Insta, both um, TFOP now. And uh, join us on our Discord. Here is all the addresses in one frame. And with that, we say goodbye. Till next time. Bye. Bye, folks. Bye. Take care. Thank you.